Michael Lyons Recovery Systems, Myron Fu Higher Performance. We're at episode seven. We've enjoyed this. We've enjoyed the dialogue and discovery of this from each other. We hope you've enjoyed it as well on this journey. So we want to do a wrap up, uh, final conclusions and wrap up key takeaways, uh, tips and tricks. So I think this is a, a learning process for everyone. It is. Uh, and the human body hasn't changed. Uh, what we, how we stimulate it uh, over a period of time has changed with different methods and techniques. So tuning into that and being mindful of the different aspects of recovery is uh, what is going to serve us well uh, from an adaptation and also keeping ourselves on the right side of healthy with our exercise pursuits. So we covered a couple of key uh, summaries earlier. So we I just have this slide up. Uh, as a reminder that sleep is the number one modality. So um, let's do a quick recap on sleep. Yeah. So sleep-wise, um, always try to sleep before 11 p.m. if you can. Um, try to get seven to eight hours of sleep, uninterrupted sleep. Um, again, sleep hygiene, really important. Try to put away your devices one hour before you sleep. You don't want your electrical brain waves to be uh, turned on just before you sleep. Um, like what Mike mentioned previously, turn on an audiobook uh, and you just naturally go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's the hours before midnight that count the most. So going having eight hours of, sl of sleep that start at 1 a.m. and finish at 9 uh, a.m. is not the same as 10 a.m. to 7. The 10 to 7, the 11 to uh, to, 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 to eight or, or, or whatever is much more valuable. The hours before mid midnight count the most. So part of this is tuning into your body's natural circadian rhythm. So the circadian rhythm is influenced a lot by sunrise and sunset. So towards sunset, your body starts to secrete a hormone to slow you down and prepare you for rest. So avoid stimulus too much stimulus at that end of the day, uh, including coffee, because um, coffee has a, a half-life of around 12 hours, so that will mess with your sleep. So try and put yourself into a wind-down state. We mentioned tools that can help you, like the Biomat, uh, the compression boots can certainly help influence sleep and the quality of sleep. Personally, my tip would be wear an eye mask. If you're sensitive to sound, put in earplugs. Uh, not always easy, particularly the mums out there who tend to sleep with one eye open and one ear on uh, what's going on with the kids. So, uh, but um, it, it's very important to try and have that time out, uh, especially if you're a busy mum. Um, the whole family, if, if mum's tired, then you're, you're the whole family is going to suffer in a sense. So you're doing the right thing by yourself first and also, uh, of course, the family. Yeah. Okay, so that's uh, that's sleep. Important also to monitor your sleep. So if you've had a lousy night's sleep, you know, there's lots of devices you can wear in order to monitor. So some of the key metrics would be obviously the length, the duration, it would be the proportion of deep sleep and the proportion of REM sleep. They're um, essential for both body and brain uh, recovery. So I would be monitoring that over time and looking at ways of incrementally improving. So if you go back to our uh, episode on exercise and sleep, we drill down quite deep into some of those tricks and tips. So you, we'd encourage you to revisit uh, that. Um, so perhaps some resources for the users to, to read. Uh, I think one of the books is Why We Sleep. Um, and just take note that one of the main reasons why we sleep, I mean, there are so many reasons uh, in terms of the healing of the body, but if talking about performance, it's really about human growth, hormone production, um, fat loss, muscle gain, um, gaining strength, speed, and everything. It's all based upon your human growth, hormone production. So if you're not sleeping, you are losing out on that. Yeah, so try not to wake too many times a week via an alarm clock because your HGH levels are naturally highest 
just before you wake naturally. So if you're disturbing that by waking earlier than normal, uh, that can be detrimental. So um, just be aware of that. Personally, I try to limit my alarm clock days to once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. it, it might be in the weekend for a long ride where by default you need to get out early to beat the traffic and beat the heat. So not too many times. Uh, naps count but don't nap too long. So a nap can be a way of actually catching up on sleep. It's not an excuse to not sleep properly in the first place, but naps uh, count. So how long would you say a, a nap should be? Not more than 20 minutes. Okay, because if it is longer than 20 minutes, it may interfere with your night's sleep. Your body may not um, want to go into a rested state. Uh, so then we discuss tools. Actually, we, we myth bust ice. So we, we did a, um, for, for those of you out there um, who haven't seen that, um, ice is a quite a contentious subject because we have people uh, in present day who think that ice is a form of recovery. It is a form of trauma. Uh, um, it, it is used typically for trauma. That's a correct use case because it's controlling bleeding and a form of pain relief. However, ice for general recovery is a bad thing because it delays the three phases of inflammation that are necessary for you to ultimately mature your training into gains. So ice will actually negate uh, a good training session. So just be aware of that. Yeah. Just uh, remember that inflammation is the key to performance. So by just dumping yourself in ice after training, you really not uh, having the benefits of training itself. Yep. So we, we also talked about commonly used tools and their appropriate frequency. So we'll go on to just quickly summarize um, foam rolling, percussion guns, and hands-on proper sports massage. These are restorative in nature to restore range of motion. They're doing different things from each other, but I would put them in the category of range range of motion restoration they shouldn't be done on traumatized um, muscles so in other words don't put a percussion gun after you've abs had a leg stay mm -hmm. and you've absolutely smashed yourself you'll be worse not better uh, however i think the correct time to use would be uh, when you're fully recovered when your body's going to res be receptive to the stimulus and it's going to assist with that lengthening, that breaking down of scar tissue, the lengthening of the fascia, and to retor return to a normal range of uh, motion. Yeah. Um, again, uh, like what uh, Mike said, percussion guns, you want to use it, um, not just sparingly, but the time to use it is really important. And then that goes the same as massages as well. Yep. Um, so, you know, just had a leg day. You, the last thing you want to do is to go for a deep sp uh, sports tissue massage. Yeah. Uh, what you want to do is to get something that's of a longer stroke, like strokes of what we call the effluage kind of techniques, so Swedish techniques, um, because it helps to calm your nervous system down um, at the same time promotes blood flow. So yeah. not all massages are the same. You want to take note of the kind of massage that you're doing uh, because uh, I know it, for Olympics, they are very, very particular on the kind of massage that they are yeah. getting before and after, and it's absolutely different kind of techniques and strokes. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So uh, having a massage the week of a key race uh, may be a bad thing. And um, generally, I'd prescribe uh, with the athletes I've worked with over the years a massage in a deloading week or a recovery week, knowing that they're going to be worse before they're better. So that's the necessary step back in order to move two steps forward. So that's uh, rest, the restorative. So let's take a look at, um, so th there's other um, uh, tools in there like cupping to allow blood flow into uh, deep into the fascia where there may be um, you know, a low blood supply mm -hmm. to improve that. We talked about dry needling and acupuncture and their use case for reconnecting. Uh, at, um, I would also do a shout out for practitioners mm -hmm. as well. So a good practitioner uh, in the biomechanical space for uh, perhaps starting from the feet up, because a lot of problems start uh, at, with the feet. Mm -hmm. Incorrect shoes, bad biomechanics leads to issues with 
ankles, knees, hips, and right into the back. It's going to translate right through your body. So getting that right is a very important thing. So good working with a good biomechanical uh, um, practitioner who understands that is quite important. So a quick case study. Um, we work with um, my foot doctor mm -hmm. uh, over the years with my whole team. So they did a, an assessment of my whole of, of our whole triathlon club and they discovered that 70% of our guys were running in the wrong shoes. Now they don't sell shoes themselves. They had no vested interest in that, uh, but they looked at the biomechanics, um, a quick assessment on a treadmill, and they were, they were um, commenting on the athlete and making comments like, your uh, left calf muscle gets sore, doesn't it? And how did you know that? So it was quite clear in their biomechanics. Yeah. So that in involved an adjustment. Some of them needed to control their foot via an orthotic, and some of them needed running drills or strengthening uh, the body to, to allow the structure to work uh, better. So, um, yep, so shout out to the, uh, um, to the practitioners out there who are assisting with everything from biomechanics mm -hmm. to bloods, you know, to reading a proper athlete blood screen to, to pick out where there might be issues, why an athlete may not be responding to the training stimulus as well. So sometimes you need to uh, be looking at, at having those sorts of people in your, um, in your ecosystem in order to uh, maintain good athlete health and recovery. Um, so we also so talked about frequency of use. So some of these tools you should not use every day. Some of them are weekly in nature. So some of them might be once or twice a month. So there's a correct rhythm and pace about applying these in order to get benefit from them. Uh, we also talked about the whatever is convenient often will be repeated. So whatever you have that's convenient and uh, near to you, say in home, for example, uh, it is often the most beneficial thing that you can have because convenience re breeds repeatability and repeatability will make a difference. So examples of some of those tools uh, from, uh, from recovery systems, for example, would be the boots and the biomats. So the boots focusing on circulation and mimicking the bodies uh, natural and improving the body's natural circulatory response to remove uh, the, the any metabolic waste and bring back uh, fresh nutrients back to speed up the whole healing and recovery process. Uh, and also the, the mats at a cellular point of view that are helping with detox through to cellular and nerve regeneration in order to um, create a a better cellular state. So there are a couple of good combinations that are convenient and, and easy to use. So whatever it is uh, in, in your, um, you know, that, that you have that's convenient, convenient um, make it a repeatable uh, state uh, so that you're going to get the benefit out of it. Work-ins. Work-ins, something that's not usually discussed, um, but it's absolutely crucial um, because all people think about is workouts. Uh, workouts breaks you down. Work-ins is meant to make you work harder. Uh, so examples of work-ins are active mobility work. Um, and work-ins don't mean light training. Work-ins means you want to work at where your joint and regions and ranges are. So active mobility work like moving in three dimensions. So I can think of like say Cossack squats. Um, kettlebell halos. Uh, these are just really simple examples of what work-ins are. Something that's like 20 to 30 percent of your one rep maximum. Um, good work-ins actually make you perspire a little bit. Um, so what work-ins does is that it helps to promote blood flow to the muscle. And uh, one of the things that's not talked about during training is that the training stimulus is meant to break down a little bit of your tendons and ligaments for repair. And what work-ins does is that it helps to promote blood flow to the tendons and ligaments. Yep. And all forms of training, be it aerobic or strength training, they all would cause muscle shortening and tightness. So if you don't do active mobility work, you realize that you will be tight and you will stay tight. Um, work-ins will help you to ensure that your muscle go back 
uh, it goes back to its resting length. Yeah. So that's a that's a great message for all endurance junkies out there who are chasing miles on the bike or kilometers weekly targets on the bike. I think it's very uh, all runners um, where they do, where you're doing repetitive motion that uh, it's uh, se selling yourself on the idea that a work in is valid and valuable uh, to your longevity in the sport and will also help uh, protect you from injury as well. So um, the downside of endurance cycling and, and running is that anything over an hour and you're actually tearing muscle down. So you're actually potentially compromising your structure and your whole biomechanics. So that can lead to your body finding the weakest weakest link and your body breaking, uh, like ACLs and, and so on. So in order to prevent that, particularly with older athletes, strength and conditioning should be part of your medicine. It should be part of your routine. And that whole work-in concept, I love that because you're, uh, you said this in an earlier episode, and I really took note of this, it's not, the movement pattern that you're used to that will cause the injury it's when you're going outside of that movement pattern maybe you're uh you're changing direction suddenly and all of a sudden you find you have an injury and it's because your muscles weren't prepared they're strong in one direction we need to uh, make them holistically uh strong in all directions in order to support what we're doing yes yeah so workins was a key takeaway for me, I'm, I've worked in, and I'm going to be working them into my routine as well. All right, so I think that's, uh, it's been a great series. I've learned a lot. Thank you very much, Myron. Thank you, Myron. I've learned a lot myself. It's been awesome. So you can connect with us. We'll have our social uh, um, um, tags and so on uh, at the end of this video. Um, and we'd also encourage you to send us any questions either to high performance through Instagram or recovery systems. If you have uh, any questions or if you want to try our product or, or come in and try the gym, book a, book a trial at the gym as well. Come and see and experience for yourself what we're both about. So we look forward to seeing you at some stage in the near future. Bye for now.